بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم دی اسٹوڈنٹس آف ہسٹری ایم بی بی ایس آئی واز سینگ دی سلیبس آف یو ایچ ایس ٹو ڈے اینڈ آئی ہیو سین دیٹ دی میموری گلینڈ از آلسو انکلوڈیڈ ان یور سلیبس تو میں نے سوچا کہ لگے ہاتھوں ہم میموری گلینڈ کے بارے میں بھی پڑھ لیں تو میموری گلینڈ کی ہسٹالوجی میں آج آپ کو پڑھاتا ہوں یہ ہمارا آخری ٹاپک ہوگا پہلے ایک چھوٹی سی ویڈیو کلپ دیکھیں اور اس کے بعد پھر ہم اصل ٹاپک کی طرف آتے ہیں Memory glands, these are the organs of milk production and it consists of 15 to 25 lobes of compound tubulo-alveolar glands. There are lactiferous ducts. The memory glands are specialized to cutaneous glands lying within the subcutaneous tissue and memory glands are present in both sexes but develop only slightly during the childhood. At puberty, these glands enlarge rapidly in the female, but very slowly in the male. They remain incompletely developed in the female until pregnancy occurs. The memory glands attain their full development during the second half of pregnancy. These glands undergo regression after the menopause. 
In the male, there is no further development of the mammary gland after puberty. In the adult female, each mammary gland comprises of 15 to 25 lobes, each of which actually is an independent gland of compound fibuloalveolar variety, and each lobe has its own duct, which is called the lactiferous duct, which opens at the nipple. Adjacent lobes are separated from each other by the dense collagenous. This is the, these are different lobes and these are the lactiferous ducts, connective tissue. The lobes of mammary gland are further divided into lobules by loose and delicate intralobar connective tissue. Let's talk about the nipple and the areola. The epidermis of the nipple and areola is highly pigmented. The underlying dermis shows tall papillae and has many smooth muscle fibers. Contraction of this muscle hardens and elevates the nipples. The skin of areola bears a variable number of coarse hairs and contains sebaceous and sweat glands. In addition, it lodges special glands called the areolar glands. These glands are considered to be modified mammary glands that have a structure intermediate between the mammary glands and the sweat glands. These areolar glands secrete a fatty product which protects the areola during lactation. The skin of the nipple is richly supplied by the sensory nerve endings. If we talk about the ducts of the mammary glands, each lobe of the mammary gland has its own main duct that is lactiferous duct that opens at the nipple and just beneath the nipple each lactiferous duct has a small dilatation which is called lactiferous sinus these are the lactiferous sinuses you can see and these are the openings of the lactiferous ducts as in any compound gland the main duct branches and a terminal duct finally enters each lobule the intralobular and interlobular ducts are lined by a simple cuboidal or low columnar epithelium. The main duct including the lactiferous sinus is lined by a stratified cuboidal epithelium consisting of two layers of cuboidal cells. And close to the opening at the nipple, the epithelium of the main duct becomes stratified squamous. There are myoepithelial cells and they can be observed in the lining epithelium of mammary gland ducts. These cells are located between the epithelium and its basal lamina and are more evident in the larger ducts. The parenchyma of the mammary gland shows profound structural variations which are dependent on the function inactive mammary gland. In the inactive mammary gland, you can see in a non-pregnant woman, the glandular tissue is sparse and consists of tubules which are lined by a simple cuboidal or low columnar epithelium. These tubules may be regarded as terminal segments of the intralobular ducts. No SNI are present. The intralobular connective tissue is abundant and lies between and around the tubules. So this is all, this is the connective tissue there. Are there is a lot of fat, these are the signet ring cells, these are the fat cells. If we talk about the active mammary gland, the mammary gland undergoes dramatic development during pregnancy in preparation for lactation. And this development occurs under the influence of estrogen, progesterone, prolactin and human placental lactogen. In the first half of the pregnancy, the intralobular ducts rapidly proliferate and form buds that enlarge into SNI. During lactation, the active mammary gland, soon after childbirth, the mammary glands begin active secretion of the milk and the secretion accumulates in the lumen of many SNI due to which they become distended and appear as saccules. These are the distended the milk is present here in the duct and you can see the distended SNI. The epithelial lining of the dilated SNI becomes low cuboidal or squamous. 
the cytoplasm of the acnr epithelial cells appear to be crowded by large fat globules the cytoplasm of the acnr epithelial cells appears to be crowded by large fat globules and small dense granules of milk proteins the loose connective tissue between the acnr contains many plasma cells these secrete immunoglobulins which are the antibodies into the milk after lactation the mammary glands undergo regressive changes and return to the state of an inactive gland the acnr decreases in size and gradually disappear until none of them is recognizable in the gland the intraglobular connective tissue and fat become abundant and once again after menopause the mammary glands undergo progressive involution the secretory epithelium atrophies and ultimately only a few remnants of the duct system persist the connective tissue also undergoes degenerative changes and there is a marked decrease in the number of fibroblast collagen fibers and the elastic fiber Cancer of the breast is a commonly occurring disease in the women and most of the malignant tumors of the breast are derived from the epithelial lining of the ducts and therefore are called the ductal carcinoma and the incidence of breast cancer in women is reported to be nearly 10% it has <coughs> it has also been observed that the risk of developing a breast cancer increases with the age What about the milk? The milk is a proteinaceous fluid containing salts, casein, lactalbumin, lactose, and suspended fat globules. Milk is rich in calcium and also contains a number of vitamins, minerals, and electrolytes. The immunoglobulins, mainly IgA, provide a degree of temporary immunity to the newborn. The secretion of milk appears to be partly neurocrine and partly apocrine in nature. Milk proteins including casein are synthesized within the rough endoplasmic reticulum of the secretory cells. These proteins are packed in the Golgi complex and then transported in membrane bound vesicles to the apical surface where they are discharged by a neurocrine mode of secretion. The fatty components of the milk are elaborated and discharged in a different manner. Lipid droplets appear within the cytoplasm and later coalesce to form large fat globules near the apex. 